can McCaffrey do it again? It's the coach, and this is the 2018 season on EA Sports. Coming up, dual threat Christian McCaffrey. Fresh off a big game a week ago, as it'll be the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Carolina Panthers. I'll see you again at halftime as we preview some of the action coming up on Sunday. But for now, it's Thursday night football. And on the call, as always, it's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to the Carolinas and Bank of America Stadium here in Uptown Charlotte. A short time ago, a scene that never fails to stir up the folks here in Charlotte. Cam Newton strutting his way onto the field. His guys are fired up as they get set to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Atlanta Falcons. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we look at this Panther ball club as they interplay here. They've been buoyed by getting two home games right at the start, and they come off a good victory in week one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Falcons, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. Two teams here, each off to 1-0 starts, as this one is underway on EA Sports. This will be fielded at the 8. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So here are the Panthers now for their opening drive. They're led out by their big-bodied electric quarterback, Cam Newton. And when he's at the top of his game, you see that big smile? That's when you know everything is clicking. That means he's accurate throwing the football. They can't get him down in the run game, and his team is having a whole lot of fun because when they score a touchdown, some fan's going to get lucky and get the game ball. Now a play fake here on first down. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. To throw on second down is Newton. Fighting to stay upright. And a big loss here as he's taken down. One thing that I liked about this guy during the draft process was his motor. Of course, I loved his skills, but he plays hard on every down. And that motor on full display there as he gets his first NFL sack. Set. From his goal line here, Newton. And he will find the open man. It's DJ Moore. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. you got to go up and make the tackle right away. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking about ordering dinner, ordering snacks. I was just going to say. That's, that's where I go. Coleman. Now a loose football. Coleman lost it. But the Falcons were able to recover, so they will keep possession. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can make a play on the football. 
It's a 42-yard punt, but eight on the return. And the Panthers will take over now first and 10. Carolina getting set to take the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball. This Rush coming, and he's taken down. Zadarius Smith coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Yeah, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game, I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what, when he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Here's Newton. Flushed out right. He may try and run for this. Five yards that time out of the scramble, but now they're looking at a fourth down situation. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. Good blocking there. Nearly sprung him as it is. It'll go as a 19-yard return. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Detroit! Detroit! They'll start out on the ground with Coleman. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They did a really nice job there defensively. They strung the play out, didn't give them a cutback lane. On each play, you have guys what I call our BCR players. Guys are responsible for the bootleg, for the cutback, and for the reverse. They played that one perfectly. And rode him right out of bounds. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Well, that's a pretty darn good start to his season, huh? A sack in the opener, adds a second one here. That tells you about his offseason. He came in determined to have a big year, and it's paying off. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Buying time to his left. He's going to run, but he's got a long way to go. One quarter in the books here on a Thursday night. Nothing, nothing, our score. We're back to Uptown Charlotte after this timeout. And they've got it here with a... So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Coleman now. Finding some room at midfield. And all the way down to the 41-yard line. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw that on that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really foul. nice game there. Unnecessary roughness, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. They'll set up a throw. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I think the last two plays really illustrate how difficult it is to game plan against this guy because you know he can throw the football, but how about his use of legs as well? What we call those broken plays, you can't account for them. Yeah, those plays, those two that you just mentioned, a microcosm really of how he can hurt you. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. When you get your backs in the shadow of your goal line, you've got to be physical in that situation because there's not a whole lot of space, not a lot of... And he will score! Touchdown, Falcons! It's their quarterback, his second touchdown on the season. And the Falcons are in for six. Good start to the season for him. He had the touchdown last week in the opener and a second one in week two now. How about the pace he's already established, right? Not sure he can keep it up for an entire season. 
but don't burst the bubble because he thinks that he can. Do guys go into a season with a goal for touchdown scored or yardage? What do you think? I think every single one of the guys who's going to touch the football, they all have those types of goals. The Panthers offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. And this is their third drive right now, maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple. And got his man complete! And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. And give him a gain of 37. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. They go play action here on first down. And this is caught at the eight. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. Devin Funches. His first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Panthers are now an extra point away from tying up this game. Gano the extra point. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Now the Falcons' offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, offensive linemen and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A big run there. 29 yards and a first. I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, what they call play side. But how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want that left tackle. If you bring your tight end over there, either way, control the edge of the line of scrimmage, you got a chance to rumble. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. It's been my observation, there's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Calvin Ridley, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Falcons are in for six. And it was a tight window. He knew he had to rocket that thing in there. He got it done. Your confidence has to just go sky high. You just mentioned it. Tight window. Zings it in there despite excellent coverage. Result, touchdown. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And onto the field. Here come the Panthers. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Personal foul, face mask, defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. And Charles, this infraction is going to be against the offense. False start. Sometimes you have to get up to the line of scrimmage, make false sure start. your team is set offense. before you begin your cadence. Maybe anticipating a blitz and they jumped. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on that play. Had to pick them up and they jumped. To throw is Newton. And oh, look at that, a diving catch. A good pick up there at 20 yards. 
Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back with more from Charlotte after this. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. Now Newton on first down. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. There he goes inside the 30. And finally taken down at the 15. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Now they, they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? From the red zone now, Newton. And he'll go down inside the 15 at his own 13-yard line. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. They'll come out throwing here on first down. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Here's Coleman. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The Falcons Detroit, on third Detroit. down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third down and 12. They'll set up to throw. He's going to fire one deep, middle of... Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Back to throw now on first down. Looking downfield for Jones. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. I know exactly why he tried to throw the ball to Julio Jones there. He's never considered covered. He's either too fast or too strong. You always try and get it to him. Especially on those deep passes. Back to throw now on second and 10. Forced out to his left. Able to make something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. On play action, they'll throw. Now he's flushed out left. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the Detroit, defense? Let's Detroit. face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. And Green with a catch left side. And down inside the 15 he goes. And they go with a slant that time, 15 yards at a first down. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. This is caught. And he's brought down. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. They'll look to throw again. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. In for the score. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. The point after is good, and it's now 21-7. Here's Bosher to kick it away. Short, short kick. One of the up middle take it down. And they're going to have really good starting field position here as that's taken up close to the 40. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Set. 
A final shot before the break. Newton. Hit a shot, couldn't connect. Due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. The Falcons back to receive. They've got the lead, and they'll get this football as the second half gets underway. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And he will find Ridley on the left side. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And he'll get across midfield and into Carolina territory. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. They will run again with Coleman. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. The Falcons on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Shaq Thompson in there to drop him for a six yard loss and that'll lead to a fourth down. To me, the defense was a little gas near the end of the first half, but they come out of the locker room with a little extra spring in their step. Wonder what they did at halftime to get them so motivated. I don't know, but that sack looked good. Now let's see if they can build on the momentum of that play. The Panthers offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because uh, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> and that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. And they work this out past the 25. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. We often, with Cam Newton, talk a lot about his legs. Don't forget about that arm. He can throw it on a rope. He can loft it. He's got the touch that's been developed throughout his career. But the big part about just watching him throw it, it seems almost effortless. Wide open receiver complete. And they work this well on field across the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. First down, it's Newton. Looking for his tight end on the corner, it's complete. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. 
They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. It's the Panthers in possession of the football, but facing a depth. The Panthers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. Out of the gun, Newton. Throws a quick hitter on the slant, that's complete. And they just keep marching right along, first down on a pickup of eight there. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. And all this is taken in one-handed, what a catch. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. That was a terrific catch. I mean, to go up there and get it one-handed like that, but I almost want to go into that riff about back in my day, the gloves weren't quite like this. When did gloves really become prevalent, just in general? I think in the 80s. I think as we started to move through the 80s, especially as we got towards the latter part of that, but a lot of those were really like baseball batting gloves to begin with with not much of a tacky area on the glove. In fact, there was none. I actually remember in cold weather games wearing the old scuba gloves, which you'd wear in the diving, but they would split too easily in the course of a the game. Then the glove manufacturers got smart and started adding to it, and here we are today. One yard, the official pickup there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rush is just deep. He's got it for a Panther touchdown. As his guys are in for six and the Panthers are able to get this back within a touchdown. Gano now to add the extra point. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. Gano out to kick this one away. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. Oh, twisting away. And a nifty return there as he's all the way up past the 40-yard line. At some point, we're going to get it through our heads. Special teams, special teams, special teams. The spark that often wins games. Very good starting field position for the Falcons offense as they come up first and 10. And the drive starts with a handoff to Coleman. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. And this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route, tackle him inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. And he will take it in for a Falcon touchdown. Duke Johnson, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Falcons will extend their lead. Extra point splits the uprights. Looking like they're well on their way to a 2-0 start. All smiles right now on that sideline, isn't it? As well there should be. It's hard to win a game in the NFL. We hear it all the time. We know that it's difficult. But guess who's smiling? But inside is thinking 24-hour rule because we're going to have to play again next week. Boss man. Oh, without a doubt. The head coach, <laughs> he wants them to feel good, but at the same time, find a way to keep improving. So Newton and the Panthers come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. From the gun, here's Newton. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. 
And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Newton out of throw. And he comes back with one complete. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That one goes for 24 yards. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Now a first down throw for Newton. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Devondre Campbell, the linebacker, picks it. Obviously disappointing, but you had to go for broke here, down two scores. So that forced you to make some throws you definitely wouldn't want to make. And I think this interception is going to pretty much write an end to this one. All right, here we go. Green. They begin the drive with Coleman, and he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Now on the heels of that run by Johnson, here's another first and ten. They stay on the ground on first with Johnson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The Panthers going to use the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. The first down carry here for Johnson. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. When big runs occur, sometimes there's a sense that things were pretty easy, and that one carried him down inside the 10. But getting into the end zone now, that won't be easy at all because you're going to face different defenses and not as much real estate to work with. Will they be able to run it, or will they have to throw it in order to try and score? And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. A.J. Green, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a play later? Now the Panthers offense, they get set to come back onto the field. They're down big here late. I don't know, you just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge. And someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's they get got Cam fighting. He lost the football. It's out. And the Falcons say they have it. They do. All right, you've had to put up with me in this booth. I'm going to try and be simple this time and succinct. It simply has not been their night. No, I think that fumble's kind of indicative of how this whole evening's gone, isn't it? Without a doubt. I mean, they've, they've tried, <laughs> but nothing has ever really taken throughout the game. That's why they're down so big. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Steps away to his left. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road 
band together and get it done. So for the Falcons, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with the victory. And they'll get a few extra days to get ready for next week where they 